there is the unicast global unicast address and the global unicast address again is a unique address that hosts uh, gets assigned uh, and it's actually used uh, to communicate globally on on the internet um, and uh, to recognize an address whether it's a, a global unicast address or not all the addresses um, in that category they start with 001 any address that starts with 001 in the leftmost in the leftmost uh, bits uh, is actually a, a global uh, unicast address. So anything that starts with two, and then anything, or three, and anything. Uh, so those are global unicast addresses. Okay. Um, so of course, um, a global unicast address has three parts. You have the uh, global uh, routing uh, prefix, uh, which is the uh, this global routing prefix is the uh, is the network part? You have the subnet ID. Uh, if you have uh, subcategorization from the network to subnets, you have a subnet ID and you have the interface ID. So the global unicast address has uh, three parts. Uh, it has the uh, uh, global routing prefix and it has the subnet ID and it has the interface ID. As we have uh, said before, uh, typically uh, these these two parts is slash 64, which means that typically you have 64 bits uh, to represent both the global routing prefix and the subnet ID. And here you have the interface ID again, uh, uh, 64, 64 bits to represent the interface ID. Uh, so the router configuration, um, you, you will find in many cases that uh, the commands that are used to configure the router for IP version 6 is uh, is quite similar, identical in many cases, to, to how to configure IP address uh, version 4. But uh, instead of using uh, IP address version 4 uh, addresses, you use IP address version 6 addresses. Um, so in this example here, we see that this router has two uh, gigabit uh, interfaces and one serial interface. Uh, so it has IP address uh, version 6 on, on these uh, three networks, so uh, this is how to configure, and you will get familiar with this as part of the lab. You will get to use these um, commands to configure IP address version 6 on, on these interfaces uh, in the lab. Uh, similarly, in Windows, again, you have um, uh, static uh, or manual uh, setting for IP address version 6, except that here the subnet mask has become a prefix length as opposed to um, dot decimal notation, and the, the, again the default gateway is is on the same network like the host uh, uh, global uh, unicast address. The way that uh, an interface or a host uh, obtains a global unicast IP address and a link local uh, IP address in, in version six, if you remember in IP address version four, we used to use um, automatic. Uh, assignment of IP address version 4 using DHCP. Um, in version 6, um, we have two possible ways. Uh, we have what we call stateless ad address auto configuration. So, unlike IP address version 4, which is always obtained from the DHCP server, the IP address version 6 can actually get the IP address information from the router. So it gets the, uh, the network prefix from uh, the router using what we call the slack um, method or the stateless address auto configuration. In stateless address auto configuration, the host will send what we call a router solicitation. It requests the router to send it back the network prefix part. Of course, the IP address has uh, minimum two parts, the prefix part and the host part or the interface ID. So through the Slack method, it can actually uh, send a request to the router and obtain the uh, network uh, prefix part. And then it will, um, and that's use, using uh, the ICMP version six. So through ICMP version six, it can send a router solicitation to the router to get uh, the network prefix. So it gets the prefix, it gets the prefix length, and it gets the default gateway. 
And this information exists in the router. Um, of course, uh, DHCP has some extra information like the DNS uh, server uh, and so on. So there is, uh, there is option two as well. So option one uses only Slack, uh, the Slack method. And in Slack method, uh, the host will get the prefix, the prefix length, and the default gateway. But it cannot get the DNS uh, information. In option two, it uses a combination of Slack method and DHCP. Um, uh, so in that case, in addition to achieving or obtaining the prefix uh, number from the router, the host can also uh, get or obtain the DNS uh, server IP address from the DHCP uh, version 6. And there is the option 3. For option 3, uh, uh, the host will not use the Slack method, so it will not send any router solicitation to uh, the router, Instead, it will send a normal quest to the DHCP similar to IP address version 4, and then DHCP server will send back the, uh, all the uh, IP information, including the global unicast address and the link uh, local address and the default gateway and the prefix and all the information required. So uh, we'll take a look at the details of this. So depending on the option used, uh, the, uh, the host may actually receive part of the information including the prefix and the prefix length or all the information if it sends uh, a solicitation or a request to DHCP uh, version uh, 6. Um, for the option 1, uh, it actually achieves uh, the prefix and the prefix length, but there is a part that's missing here which is what we call the interface ID. So the router will send back the prefix and the prefix length, but it does not send back the interface ID because the interface ID is uh, is a unique assignment for, for the host. So in that option, option one, uh, the host uh, uh, will use Slack to achieve the prefix from the router, and then it will use another method to assign the interface ID. This uh, method is called the EUI or the Extended Unique Identifier Process. Uh, the Extended Unique Identifier Process is used to get uh, the interface, a unique interface ID. And uh, the process is very easy. The, the process has three uh, steps. Uh, in that case, uh, the host will get the physical address of that interface, um, whether this is a, a, an Ethernet interface or a, uh, or a Wi-Fi or something. It has a MAC address. So, for example, uh, the, 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 this is the MAC address for this interface, which has two parts, as we have explained before. It has the organizational unique identifier and it has a device identifier. Again, the physical IP address is, is 48 bits and it's divided into two parts. Each part is 24 bits. So we have the first 24 bits here and then the, the last 24 bits. Um, the UI process divides that into uh, two 24-bit uh, parts like this, and then it embeds between those two parts a uh, fixed, uh, 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 fixed hexadecimal digits, which is FFFE. So this is actually a fixed part that gets embedded between the physical uh, address. And then uh, the, the third or last step is just to change this, this particular bit or flip it or toggle it. So it will flip or toggle uh, this bit. If it's zero, it converts it to one. If it's one, it converts it to, uh, to zero. And the reason for this is actually mentioned in the, uh, in the standard. For us, we'll take it uh, for granted that this bit will have to be uh, toggled depending on whether it's one or, or zero. So for this particular example, this physical uh, address is, um, is FC9947. And remember that the interface uh, ID is actually uh, 64 uh, bits. So this is 24, and this is 16, and this 16 uh, bit representation is fixed. Uh, so this is 16, and this is a 24. So uh, this is actually in total uh, 64 uh, bits to represent the interface ID. So that's the process of extended unique identifier uh, that the host can use to to get uh, to get the uh, a unique uh, interface ID. So uh, to assign 
a link local address on an interface. Uh, as we said before, the link local address uh, starts with um, F, uh, FE80, and then anything. So um, we'll fix that part for uh, 64 bits. And then the last uh, part will be the interface ID. And this part will, uh, will be based on the EOI64 using the physical IP address. So that's how the host assigns a link local address to itself. And again, the link local address is used to communicate on the local uh, network and the router will not uh, forward the packets using uh, these addresses. Of course, there is a slight uh, problem with the uh, EOI method is that uh, it uses the MAC address and the MAC address tends to be pretty long. So that means the IP address is in fact uh, uh, long. Uh, and so in some cases, we may actually uh, uh, use the static uh, representation or the static assignment of uh, the link local address. And in that case, we use um, uh, a link local address like this, FE80, and then column column one. So instead of using interface ID, which corresponds to the physical address of that interface, we may use an arbitrary number to, uh, uh, to make the address uh, smaller, as we can see here. And in that case, this particular example, the router will actually assign the same link local address on all interfaces. So all we need to do is just to make sure that within each interface on this network, that this address is unique. Um, so this is the drawback when we use a static link local IP address, uh, that we have to make sure that uh, uh, manually that this address is uh, is in fact unique.